Okay, we're going to look at a strip and atrial flutter and we're going to um, measure out the flutter waves. And I've taken this strip and I've turned it upside down for you. Okay, sometimes it's easier to see atrial flutter uh, if you have a different viewpoint. Um, so if you look at the strip up here, we see regular occurring bumps, which honestly look a lot like P waves. They're kind of little and whatnot. Um, but if you look at the rate between these bumps, there's about six little boxes between. That would give us a rate of close to 250 beats per minute, which is absolutely impossible for a P wave to go through the AV node that fast. Now, if I turn the strip upside down, you can actually, your eye can now pick up these nice little flutter waves. You look at the bottom of your page here. So here they are, nice little bumps, not real big, but very definitely fluttery. And they're very regular throughout the strip. Now we want to remember that flutter waves continue under T waves, under QRSs. The atrial flutter waves are coming and occurring in the atria and have nothing to do with the QRSs and the Ts. So they're going to be landing on top of each other. There's two things happening simultaneously here. So again, if we look at the strip down below, we can start with a flutter wave here which ends here, the next one 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 would end here, the next one would end here, and here, and here, and here. So we try to measure them. We have to remember um, we're trying to come up with a ratio of how many of these flutter waves are occurring for each QRS. Um, so we need to start in the same place. And it doesn't matter where you start as long as you start and end at the same place in relation to the QRS, because you're trying to get a relationship between how many flutters there are for each QRS. So in this case, I started measuring by starting with the flutter wave that started before the QRS, in which case I started here. So from the distance from here to here is one flutter wave, second flutter wave, third flutter wave, fourth flutter wave, and now I'm at the back at the beginning of the QRS. Over here, I decided to start behind the QRS, as I saw this nice little dip right here. So I started here. So this is one flutter, two, three, four. Okay? Now let's go back up to our strip up here. Flutter wave is going to be about six little boxes apart in this point. I also, um, just for the heck of it, I marked out one second boxes here. Uh, and I counted 24 of these flutter waves in there, which gives me a heart rate for the atria of about 240. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it's about six little boxes apart, which gives me roughly 250 beats per minute. Now the ventricular rate is very regular also in this strip, um, varying about 25 little boxes between QRSs. That's going to give us a nice regular rhythm of uh, 60 beats per minute. And if you notice, if you took 60 times roughly four, you'd get approximately 250. You'd get 240 exactly. Um, so you see there's a relationship here. So let's take a look at the flutter waves and see if we can figure out that relationship. If I start before the QRS, this is flutter wave number one, number two, number three, number four. So that's four flutter waves um, per this QRS. We do the next set. We start in the same place. This is one flutter, two flutters, three flutters, four flutters. Again, I'm starting at the same place. Again, one flutter, two flutter, three flutter, four flutter. Again, one flutter, two flutter, three flutter, four flutter. So this is, this is a stable rhythm throughout of four flutter waves for each QRS. So our answer would be atrial flutter with a uh, constant ratio of four to one uh, atrial impulses or flutter waves per each QRS.